Of course. It would be my pleasure. Meditation envy? Why don't you go sit on a rocket? Calm down. What is your problem? That guy. I don't trust him. I do. I mean, he's all right, I guess. He's like someone who watches too many holovids. Or teaches them. He'd get beaten to death on Narshad almost as soon as he landed, though. Oh, that's good to hear. Thought I had some competition there. Oh, well, it's not really a competition. I mean, you're kind of an idiot, Adden. And you don't shower enough. And you scratch your... Equipment when you think no one's looking. Don't take it too hard, though. That still makes you better than most people I've met on Narshada. Thanks. If you've got some time, I'd like to see what I can upgrade for you. Yes, I do have a few moments to spare for your work. I would like to know what he is doing here, though. He helps me out with repairs. That isn't a problem, is it? I suppose not. Perhaps in working on my circuitry, your assistant will learn something about how a fully functional droid is constructed. Just ignore him and let's get to work. I would appreciate that. Our group has little in the way of time to spare, and I would not want to delay you from your other duties. Right. Let's get you open. See what you can do. I have to say, you are put together quite well. There wasn't much to do. As I told you, my design is streamlined and efficient, though I am pleased that you were able to make some improvements, and this was not just a waste of my valuable time. There were a few things from my remote that I was able to integrate into your construction. I see. Well, thank you. I'll let you get back to your work. Yeah, something wrong? Talk. About what? Sure, they're easy. That's why I dress like this. When they're looking down to check you out, you can usually smash them on the base of the skull or deliver an uppercut that knocks them flat. It's simple. When you want a man, you jab him with a Bothan stunner, then while he's screaming in pain, slap some stun cuffs on him. Then starve him for two or three days until he becomes open to suggestion, then double check his bounty and see if he's worth anything. Call it what you want. Me? I love my targets. Go ahead and ask.
Talk about what? Why, you trying to be my mother? No thanks. Already had one. Somewhere. No thanks. I didn't need friends on Narshada, and I don't need them now. Shoot. Look, before we get into a game of Guess the Pazak card, pull back on the throttle. I don't know you that well to start sharing our life stories. All right. It's all this traveling, being trapped in the ship. Everything's... Ugh, everything's just too quiet. I'd rather be doing something, somewhere with people, activity, some life. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been off-planet. Guess I got used to it. Well, Narshada may be one of the biggest cesspits in the galaxy, but it's got a life to it. Activity. Aliens. People. Refugees. It's like noise, but relaxing. Like the hum of a hyperdrive. Yeah? Hmm. Didn't think I'd hear a Jedi ever refer to Narshada like that. Yeah, right. Save the philosophy for the Disciple. He'd eat that stuff up. No thanks. You can keep your Jedi training to yourself. I already know Narshada better than you ever will. Go ahead and ask. I've killed people before, but not if I don't have to. I know. It's different. I don't know why. I don't know. I... I haven't killed anyone for a long time. But when I'm around you, suddenly it's like I've always been doing it. It's like a reflex. I don't like it. And I don't know when or why it became so easy. Shoot. made it. It's custom for me, which is a good thing, because I wouldn't want anyone using it against me. I can show you how to make rockets, though, if you like. All it requires is a good skill with demolitions.
Anything else you wanted to know? All right. I've killed people before, but not if I don't have to. Oh, do I? Is that it? How you could ever possibly hope to understand is beyond me. Jedi don't have family. I know what happened at Malachor 5, and I know the Jedi didn't care about life there. Get away from me. The next time you come and ask me a question, I swear I'll shoot you in the head and dump you out the airlock. What do you want now? Whatever, don't worry about it. It's just a sore subject with me. Yeah, well, they're dead. That's how that story ends. But not everybody's story has to end with losing their family or their loved ones. And not all the bounty hunting I do is for criminals or killers. There's a lot of lost people out there, scattered ever since the Mandalorian Wars. And sometimes it's like you can almost hear them, like an echo calling out for each other. And maybe, just maybe by finding them, I can start putting the galaxy back together. Maybe. We'll see. I don't even know why I'm telling you this. But you're not getting anything else out of me. Go ahead and ask. Yeah, more or less. I wasn't born there. I just ended up there. Well, the war happened. The first one, against the Mandalorians. I had family right up until the end. It's not really a new story, you hear it all over the galaxy. It's what happens after the wars are over that you don't hear much about. I think so. After Revan crushed the Mandalorians, planets throughout the Republic were flooded with refugees. I was just one of the others. Me? I got passage to Nar Shaddaa. From there, not much you can do, so I became a bounty hunter.
Take a guess, Jedi. Only two groups of people would have lost family at Malachor. And Jedi don't have families. As much as any slave becomes a Mandalorian, they took prisoners on every world they conquered to bolster their ranks. And they took a lot of worlds. I don't know, it didn't matter. I was too young to remember, really. Besides, Narshida's kind of grown on me. It's as much my home as any place else. When I was young, yeah. They mostly used me to carry ammo packs and munitions. Toward the end of the war, they needed everyone they could get. They taught me to fight, to hunt, to survive. I was part of their squad, even when I was young. Everyone served as part of the unit, and I, I felt like I had a place there. After Malachor, it really didn't matter anymore. The Mandalorians lost. Bad. But you know that. Yeah. I know. I saw the worlds they left behind them during the war. That kind of stays with you, I haven't forgotten it. What happened at Malachor, they... they probably deserved it. Should I be? Maybe I should ask you if you're happy about all the Jedi who died on Malachor V. Maybe it felt like you lost family there, but I doubt it. Shoot. I'm good at finding people, so I used it to make credits. Not if you know your target. Usually you get a hollow, a rough description, and then you just sort of listen to it, get a feel for him or her, then start walking. And this is a little hard to explain, but narshada has got a flow, a life to it. You see all kinds of aliens and life there, and it's got currents. You know your target, you can feel them know where they're going to go. And sometimes, you know where they're going to be before they do. I'm good at finding people. Because when they're lost or out of place, it's like something's wrong inside them. And that's why I hunt. All right. Hanhar is only a bounty hunter because that's the closest word for what he does. He's not out for credits. It's more vicious than that and it runs a lot deeper. It's like he's out to make the whole galaxy suffer, every living thing in it. He wants to break them, ruin them, and when they can't suffer anymore, he wants them dead. I didn't kill him once. Biggest mistake ever. Do you really want to hear this?
Well, Hanhar and me go way back, in the worst possible way. He's from some forest planet on the Outer Rim where Zerka had set up one of their slaving operations. Well, not for long. Once off-planet, Hanhar escaped from the Zerka slavers, then killed them all. I don't know. I always thought he just liked using them as weapons. Well, before you get too teary-eyed, Hanhar figured Zerka had the right idea. I don't think he understood the concept of slavery before, at least on the scale that Zerka practiced it. But now he did. You ever hear of Dursan III, or the ID Cluster Colonies? Right, that's because Hanhar happened. He makes what happened to his homeworld look like an exercise in community building. He's not a bounty hunter. He's a slaver. A predator. It's like he's out to enslave or kill every human in the galaxy, like he's trying to settle some huge score or debt. I don't get it, but he's dangerous. Anyone who paid credits. And sometimes, he just hunted humans for sport. The ones who survived, he sold to the exchange, to the huts, to anyone who'd buy bodies, living or dead. He and Voga used to do big credit transactions. That hut really liked the look of unwrinkled humans for some reason. Didn't make him too popular with the other huts, let me tell you. I was prey. And not only did I escape, but I saved his life while doing it. He's been hunting me ever since. I don't pretend to understand it, but among his people, they have these codes of honor. But somewhere along the line, Hanhar's got twisted. His people form these things called life debts. If you save the life of one of them, they pledge themselves to you. Well, with Hanhar, he can't escape that life debt. It's bred into him. But he hates every other living thing in the galaxy, so pledging himself to someone else, especially a human, was unbearable. So when I saved his life, it was the worst thing I could do. It was like slavery all over again. But it was in his head. It was like it pushed him over the edge. A life debt to Hanhar is a death sentence. He'll hunt you until you're dead. When I saved his life, it meant he had to kill me. And so he kept chasing me in hopes I would die. I think the fact I showed him mercy after hating humans for so long, that was something he couldn't stand.
Oh, I'm glad he's gone. It's like a weight off my shoulders. I don't have to keep watching my back every minute, wondering when he's going to show up. And he always did. It's like he always knew where I was. Trust me, if he was still alive, he'd be chasing us even now, waiting to ambush us when we least expect it. And he always shows up at the worst possible time. He was one of the best bounty hunters on Nar Shadda. Anhar never gives up on his prey. Or his life debts. He's a hunter. He's a natural predator. Probably. But if he had multiple life debts, especially to humans, Hanhar would probably go mad. He was angry before, sure, but he'd be ten times worse if that happened. Hanhar's tough. Really tough. And when he loses it, it's like nothing can stop him. I've seen him shrug off blaster bolts, both and stunners, and even survive a freighter crash on Dursan 3. He keeps coming. Yeah, tell me about it. Like I said, I get the impression a life debt's supposed to be a gift, but to Hanhar... It's more like a curse to both people involved. Well, as happens on Nar Shadda, I made someone mad. Mad enough for them to send Hanhar after me. Turns out they were even able to get him cheap. He heard about me and wanted to hunt me down, for sport. He didn't think I'd be much of a challenge. <laughs> Well, he tried to box me down in vents beneath the Nar Shadda docks, and he'd, he'd set one too many proximity mines to cover the escape routes. I think he'd hope to drive me into the mines and then let them do the work. Or that I'd be too scared to try and walk through them. Thing is, I knew Hanhar's supplier, and the trigger signatures for the mines. It was pretty easy to broadcast a signal to blind their sensor receptors for a minute or two. I figured that would buy me enough time to move through them and get away. No, it isn't. I spent most of my childhood hauling mines and munitions. I got to know my way around them. If I hadn't, I wouldn't be here right now. Like I said, I disarmed the trigger fuses for enough of the mines to get by, temporarily. And Hanhar was pretty fast on my trail. I just made it to safety when he hit the first one. The blast leveled the entire ventilation section, and Hanhar was caught right in the middle, and he survived. Barely. He was crawling around, blinded from the flash and the plasma burns. And it happened so fast. And all the blood had been scabbed and crusted from the flash. I had the drop on him, and even blind, he knew it. He could still hear me. My ears were ringing from the blast, but I, I could hear him. I think he was begging me to let him live. 
His voice, it wasn't a roar, more like an echo of it. I suppose I should have killed him, but I couldn't do it. He was in pain and he was helpless. So I dragged him out of there enough to get him to safety, and he kept hunting me ever since. He said he'd pursue me to the edge of the galaxy. No matter where I ran, he would find me and break me, that I would always be prey. Maybe. I've thought about that moment. A lot. Wondered if I would do things differently if I had another chance. Go ahead and ask. It's all this traveling, being trapped in the ship. Everything's... Ugh, everything's just too quiet. I'd rather be doing something, somewhere with people, activity, some life. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been off-planet. Guess I got used to it. Well, Nar Shaddaa may be one of the biggest cesspits in the galaxy, but it's got a life to it. Activity. Aliens. People. Refugees. It's like noise, but relaxing. Like the hum of a hyperdrive. Yeah, well, I wouldn't go that far. I'll believe it when I see it. Maybe one day, I'll let you. Alright, but I doubt you're going to show me anything I don't already know. And when you show me, don't act like a tourist. It attracts predators. I heard you making friends with the bounty hunter. I don't blame you. She's a scrapper. You don't survive on Nar Shaddaa for very long if you aren't. I've known people like her. Maybe without the rocket launchers, but sort of the same. Maybe without the plunging neckline and the boots. I wouldn't let anything she says bother you. It's a wonder you cracked her attitude at all. She's cold as the ship's hull.
What's wrong? Why are you stopping? Feel the currents here on Nashada, the ebb of life. A simple kindness can be given to another. This is the Force, and all our choices, from the greatest to the smallest, affect each other, and the echoes travel. I can feel this planet. I can't shut it out. It's louder now, it hurts. All these people. But if, if I become a Jedi, I'll have to turn myself in for the credits. Are you going to train me? I want to become like you. I want to be strong. I don't want to be afraid or alone anymore. I don't want to keep running and looking and never feel like I'm finding what I'm looking for. I am tired of being hunted. When the galaxy takes something from me, I want the power to let go. And I want the power to heal the echo when it's gone.
That sounds all right from where I'm standing. <laughs> I, I wanted to say thanks for what you showed me on Narshada. It's going to take some time to let it sink in, but, but thanks. I feel alive. It's strange, but it feels right somehow, like a piece inside me just clicked into place.
Oh, hey. Uh... <laughs> can I ask you something? your face. You, well, you have this glow. I mean, not a real glow, but it's like you're calm. At peace, but, but it's more than that. You haven't been chewing on spice, have you? Well, it shows. It's like you're hooked up to a power coupling. It's weird. I mean, not bad weird, just weird. <laughs> For a minute there, I thought you and the Disciple... <laughs> but it's just the Force. You know, hooked up a power coupling, you know? Did you get out much as a Jedi? I was asking if you two had been, you know, intimate. Got it. Just checking. Shoot. Yeah, something wrong? Yeah. Well, all I need is my rocket launcher and some rockets. I'll ignore that little crack next time you need some covering fire. What did you want to show me? All right, I think I have it. It might take some practice, but I've got the basics. Yeah, something wrong? Yeah. Well, all I need is my rocket launcher and some rockets. All right. This shouldn't take long.
Easy. Yeah, something wrong? 